the Gators because they have a voracious appetite here for victory. They have come crawling out of the murky waters around Gainesville. Meanwhile, Auburn keeps its Tiger Walk tradition alive, even on the road. Can Terry Bowden survive the swamp today and tame the number one team as he did here in 94? We'll find out next. It's Auburn against Florida. Auburn is ranked 16th in the country. Florida ranked number one. Same position when these two tangled two years ago. The Gators were ranked one. And Auburn beat them here at Florida Field. The number one team in the country has not trailed for a single second this season. They have led the entire way. 6-0, Florida. To a huge ovation on a gorgeous day in Gainesville. Florida, in fact, has not lost a regular season game since that date against Auburn here two years ago. And welcome, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. Great to have you with us here on CBS. Auburn comes in here undaunted by this challenge because twice Terry Bouton has beaten Steve Spurrier. He's 2-1 and one in their matchups. And this is the action I talked about back in 94. Florida had the lead, a minute 20 remaining. And Danny Warfold went to the air and was picked off by Brian Robinson. It set up a winning touchdown with 30 seconds to go. Auburn won here, knocking out the number one team. Terry Bowden told us how he did it. Well, I think the one thing, we have, we have, we have just made it a given that we have to try to outscore uh, Florida. We're not going to hold them down, that we're not going to keep him from scoring, and we're not going to get into some game where it's 7-3 to three in the fourth quarter. You're not going to hold them down just by controlling the football on the ground. You go out there to score as many points as you can. All right, Terry Donahue, my partner alongside. Terry Bowden, fearless in his approach. But it's not just the strategy that's worked out well for Auburn when playing against Florida. Well, coaches love to talk about turnovers. And certainly in Auburn's recent success, turnovers have been key. They have not turned the ball over a single time. Florida has turned it over nine times. Folks, if that trend continues today, the number one team in the country could go down. Well, we're going to see the number one quarterback in the country, talking about, of course, Danny Warfel, another sensational season, his senior season, and he's going against an inexperienced and youthful secondary there at Auburn, Terry. Young indeed. They start two freshmen and two sophomores in that secondary, but they have an opportunistic. They do lead the country in interceptions, but they haven't faced anyone with the skill and the accuracy this Danny Werfel, he's terrific. On the flip side, Damian Craig, the quarterback for Auburn, his best game was last week against Mississippi State, almost 400 yards passing, but he's going against the Florida bunch in that defensive backfield that has the experience that uh, Auburn misses on the defensive side. We're talking about 115 career starts out of that secondary at Florida. Well, Damian Craig can make plays, but he hasn't faced anything like this Florida defense. They lead the conference in sacks, almost five a game, they think he's gator bait. They can't wait to add to those totals today. How he responds to that pressure will determine how Auburn will do offensively. I can tell you, this play's worked up to a frenzy. You don't want to be gator bait here today. Let's send it down to the sidelines. I, I saw Michelle Tafoya down there holding some important looking documents. What's that all about, Michelle? Well, Jim, this is the biggest piece of news in Gainesville, bar none this week. This is, uh, this is Steve Spurrier's finalized contract, which was actually done about two or three weeks ago, but it became public this week. Now, in a nutshell, this deal calls for him to make just under a million a year, but with perks and bonuses, he'll make over a million annually. And the contract prompted him to do something he has never done before in his career, and that is talk to his players about the money he makes. He sat his team down Thursday and said, guys, I never dreamed I'd make this much money, but you make it for me. And then he reiterated his belief that players in college should also make money. But he punctuated his statements with this, quote, if I was in this thing for money, I could have made twice as much with that team down in Tampa, but I chose to coach you. Guys? Well, what Steve Spurrier has done here is nothing short of remarkable. He had never won an SEC title before he got here, and they've now won four in the 90s. 70-degree weather, a little breeze, no chance of rain. Robert Baker is back deep to return the kick. Auburn won the toss and won the football first. Off Matt Teague's kick, Baker fields it, three-yard line going up the middle. Baker sandwiched at the 24. Damian Craig with those four touchdown passes last week against Mississippi State, leading the Tigers to a five and one record. This is his first start against Florida. 
a junior from Pritchard, Alabama. He ranks third in the SEC in quarterback efficiency, trailing only Danny Werfel and Peyton Manning. They'll come out in a shotgun here, Terry, right off the bat. I think Terry Bowden wants to go deep, often, and early in this football game. With pressure, they're sacked number one on the first play of the game. Ed Chester. You talked about gator bait. They worked up a little appetizer here on the first play. Ed Chester, number 94, is one of the best inside tackles in college football today. He has become a dominant player on that Florida defense. That is a loss of eight. And Auburn will go back to the eye, putting the quarterback under center. Second and 18, Rusty Williams is the tailback getting the start today. Play action. Now with time, Craig fires and an errant toss in the direction of Carson Bailey. Auburn started this game with a three receiver set. Williams getting the nod at tailback with Baker, Bailey, Goodson. Goodson, a huge game last week where he caught two touchdowns against Mississippi State. And the offensive line with uh, a lot of senior experience on the right side, Leonard Thomas and Jim Rowe. Third down, third and 18 for Auburn. That offensive line will be tested by this fierce Florida rough pass rush all day long. And here they come. Greg gets away, but not enough for the first. In fact, almost to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be three and out for Auburn, which is commonplace for the Florida defense this year. One of the reasons that Steve Furrier is so high on his defense is they get the ball back so quickly for him. It allows him more offensive plays. It allows Danny Werfel and company to get onto that field and score more often. Jarrett Holmes will punt to Jacquez Green, who ran two back against Kentucky. Look out now. Holmes has had two kicks blocked this year. Green at the 37. Unable to get started. About a two-yard run back. Danny Warfel and the Gators come onto the field for the first time. The Gators, with their opening drive of the game in all six contests, driven for touchdowns and done it rather uh, quickly with alacrity. Look at this. Seven-play drive, then uh, three, seven, three, two, and six-play drive to an opening drive touchdown. The average scoring drive has taken a minute and 54 seconds for them to get the ball in the end zone. Werfel, just like the other side, he is sacked on the first snap. Charles Dorsey, top four from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Getting a loss of seven on Danny Werfel. Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator at Auburn, has to disrupt the timing of Danny Werfel throughout this entire game. Charles Dorsey, number 91 right there, gets the first sack of the day for Auburn. That's exactly what Brother Oliver wanted to do. Second down at 17. Werfel across the middle, and Ike Hillier breaks two tackles. Down at the 38 of Auburn. 28 yards to Ike Hillier. Ike Hilliard, along with Redale Anthony, give Danny Werfel his two favorite targets. They're the guys that they want, that Danny Werfel constantly wants to get the ball to him all day long. Ike Hilliard averages 17 yards per reception. Quickly now, Florida flips it over to Green. He's bumped out of bounds at the 30. A gain of eight. Danny Werfel. Ranked number one in the nation in pass efficiency with 17 touchdowns versus only three interceptions. Well, that's what you love as a coach. When you can throw often, avoid those interceptions, that is what makes your offense go. Second and two, with ball at the Auburn 30. Play clock. And a 
flag down as Warfel goes to the end zone and through the back of the end zone. Hilliard, the receiver in that area. There is a flag on the field, but first let's check in with our gang in New York. Pat O'Brien, take it away. All right, Jim, a wild finish in Madison, Wisconsin was leading 30 to 27, less than a minute. All they had to do is run the clock out. Running back Ron Dane fumbles the football. Northwestern recovers. Then they won 34 to 30 on a Steve Schnur to Dwayne Bates. A little stutter step out there on the right. 20-yard touchdown pass. Wisconsin's homecoming spoiled. Third loss in a row for the Badgers. By the way, Purdue leads Ohio State early, 14 to nothing. Back to Jim. Wow. Wild day in the uh, Big Ten, but Northwestern just charmed the way they pull out games. It is amazing. They have been amazing for two years. It's not just by pure luck. It's by great coaching and some outstanding play. A procedure penalty on that uh, last play against the Florida offense. So they'll replay the down. Back at the 35. It'll be second and seven. Williams with a nice dash up the middle for about eight, maybe nine. Elijah Williams coming off a 100-yard effort last week against LSU. Mobley in the backfield as a fullback. Then those dangerous receivers, Anthony and Hilliard, Tremaine Allen, the tight end. Offensive line with Pillar, Kalich, Mitchell, Yarbrough, and Young. The offensive line has been reworked in Florida, but they have been extremely efficient despite the changes they've made. First down, Werfel goes toward the end zone, and he had a man open. Ike Hilliard was uh, open, but heavy pressure on Werfel provided by Jimmy Brumball. The Florida offensive line is charged with the task of not letting Danny Werfel get pressure. Right here, he gets hit, thrown to the ground by uh, Jimmy Brumball, number 96, a nose tackle. Those are the kind of things that will take an effect on a quarterback as the game continues to wear along. From the 26, second and 10. Two seconds on the play clock, and Werfel has to call the timeout. So Florida opening drive of the game. Will they again drive for a touchdown? We'll find out when we come back. War Eagle is the Auburn battle cry. And the Tigers on defense, their base defensive unit started out up front with Suttle, Brumbaugh, and Smith. We'll meet the rest of the Tiger defenders in a moment. Florida with second and 10 from the 26. Elijah Williams twisted down after about a three yard run by Ricky Neal. And Takeo Spikes, two of the linebackers you see here, with Solomon and Mustella on the outside. The secondary, the base four, Bray, Houston, Ware, and Nolan. We've already seen Dan Evans and Rodney Creighton in there. They've gone to a dime package, six defensive backs. It's third and nine for Florida. Werfel all kinds of time. Looking for Anthony. Florida. They have done it again. Seven for seven on the season. Opening drives, ending in touchdowns. Riddell Anthony scores touchdown after touchdown. Here he is, man to man against Antoine Nolan, number 13. He runs a corner route. Danny Werfel does what he does so often, puts the ball right where the receiver can catch it every single time. Bart Edmiston will attempt the extra point. Danny Werfel's 93rd career touchdown pass. Edmiston, whoops, I'll try that one again. Danny Werfel, by the way, with his 93rd touchdown toss, and the 100th procedure penalty against Florida. That'll make it a 25-yard extra point drive for Edmiston, but that's the 100th touchdown that Werfel has had his hands in since he started at Florida. Seven rushes for scores and 93 touchdown passes. Jim, I've been watching college football for a long time, and I 
have not seen a team that has taken the ball in seven straight games and driven down for an opening touchdown score. It's remarkable. And that's the best word to describe the Gators, who lead 7-0. Ready to return it for the second time. Averaging 18 yards a return, he did run back a punt 79 yards for a touchdown against South Carolina two weeks ago. Baker from the goal line. Follows the wedge, good hole. And out to the 33, nice run back. His longest return of the season. Matt Teak, the kicker, was in on that tackle. Florida can take two of the most dangerous receivers in football. I kill your along with Redale Anthony right there. Line them up on the same side. One will clear out. One will run to the corner of the end zone. Right there. They clear out the corner. And Redell Anthony is wide open. Werfel puts it where he needs to. What a play. A three receiver set for Damian Craig. Hicks four is the third receiver. Out of the eye they go with Williams running hard for about nine. Maybe ten. The Florida defense has scored six touchdowns this season. Up front, Bochamp, Chester, McGrew, and Davis. James Bates in the middle, a real leader here with Rutledge and Kurse. Quick play on second and short. There is a flag down as McLeod got the handoff, the fullback. In the secondary, Fred Weary with Lawrence Wright, Shea Showers, and Thone Lott, an all-conference player. Procedure penalty against Auburn. They get second and six. Terry Bowden in his fourth year with 33 wins against only six losses and a tie and again a two and one record against Steve Spurrier you've got to give Bowden credit for the job he's gone into Auburn won 20 games in his first two seasons a remarkable record took over Pat Dye's program and has built his own program now and certainly as you mentioned has caused some problems for Steve Spurrier in Florida he won his first 20 games the first 20 as the first man in Division 1A history to win his first 20 games as a head coach. Second and six, Craig almost picked off. Bates got a hand on it. And what Bowden accomplished in his first three years ranks up there with the elite names in college football history. Bates a little shaken up as he almost made that interception grab, but uh, Bowden up there lofty territory with General Nealon. Bill Battle at Tennessee. And right on his heels, Steve Spurrier. Yeah, the record for the first three years. Third and six. Chester giving chase. Craig cuts back. And that move got him the first down. Out to the 47. Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator for Florida, was talking to us yesterday about the fact that the thing that scared him the most about Damian Craig was his ability to run the ball, to get out of trouble and to make a play with his legs. That's exactly what Damian Craig does right here. The protection breaks down, but he's able to scramble for the first down. That's what you love in your quarterback. That's what Terry Bowden loves about this guy. Marquis Cooper in the backfield. But Craig's got one-on-one -on -one action on the right side. And a pass thrown in the area there of Willie Gaucher and a flag also. Anthone Lott was the defender. Already shaking his head in disagreement. Florida likes to get up and bump and run coverage, press you all the way down the field. When they do that, they're susceptible to being beaten deep. First down, either at the flag or 15 yards. Will go after the Florida secondary often today, deep with that particular fade pass. They're going to pick on number nine, Anthon Lott. They think he's vulnerable. Now that moves the football inside of the 40. Damian Gregg says, if I can get into a rhythm, then I can have a big game. Going on Eric Lowe as a third receiver. And first down. Plenty of time on the play clock, 12 seconds. So with patience and poise, they run it. Cooper, the quick freshman to the 33, gain of about six. 
Rutgers and Showers in the final they hit. Markeith Cooper only weighs about 145 pounds. A freshman from Miami they call the Lizard. Because of his diminutive size and his running style, he's so low to the ground, that guy. They can't find him. Think about being behind those six foot five, 300 pound offensive linemen from Auburn. When you play defense, you can't see a guy that that's, is that tall. The battle of the reptiles, the Lizard against the Gators. And Fred spins away, and that will be ruled a sack. A loss of two. Ed Chester with already his second here in the first quarter. And Cameron Davis may get a half a sack. Dave, Damian Craig takes a sack on this particular play, but the pressure's going to come from the right side. Craig wants to hit number 17 out of the backfield. He gets covered. Craig does the smart thing. He pulls the ball down, fights it back to the line of scrimmage. Although it looks like a sack, it was a great decision by Damian Craig. We'll give Chester the full credit. It was Davis who collapsed the pocket on him. Third and six. Auburn very successful third down conversions on the season. Look at this time. Craig now has to run out of it. And again, I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. That'll be ruled another sack. Back at the 36. Got to consider that a coverage sack more than anything else. Damian Craig simply could not find anyone who was open downfield. So Mike Peterson came up from his linebacker position. That will not be ruled a sack. That'll count as a rush. Fourth down, and uh, Auburn wanting to go for it. That was a... Uh, Instant decision on Terry Bowden's part. He'll go to the shotgun. Eric Hines Tucker in as the single running back on fourth and seven. Craig back across the middle. Nice grab. I don't think he has enough for the first, though. That's Karsten Bailey at the 29. Let's see where they spot it. And thrown a lot on the coverage. Brought him down immediately. And it's Florida football. They won't even measure about a half yard shy. Anthony Lott, the man that Auburn wanted to go after today because they didn't think he was as fast as the other defensive backs and couldn't cover man to man, comes up with the big fourth down play right there against Karsten Bailey. About a foot short from that first down. Bob Stoops talking with Anthony Lott. He made the tackle that forced Auburn to turn it over on downs. Here's Fred Taylor in the backfield. And he is hit right away, no game. Hit first by Jimmy Brumball. Fred Taylor rushed for 107 yards last week against LSU as the Gators had two tailbacks rush for 100 and two receivers go over 100 yards. And if they had given the ball to number 22, Terry Jackson, a tailback as many times as they gave it to Williams and Taylor, he also would have had 100 yards. They have great depth at the tailback position. Second and 10. And give Brumball another sack. <laughs> Jimmy Brumball, who was the SEC's defender of the week this last Saturday. Jimmy Brumball right there on the left side of the screen comes unblocked. He beats his man inside on a twist. And come, he came from the inside, came around outside. How often do you see Danny Werfel sacked twice in the first quarter of a, of a football game. Not that often. Auburn's front people are getting to Florida right now. I can tell you're surprised. I really am. And I know the Gators are. They'll face third and 15. Third and 15 with 6.29 remaining in the first quarter. Six defensive backs in the game for Auburn. You want to remember that Nebraska upset the rhythm of Werfel in the Fiesta Bowl. That's what Auburn's trying to do today. Over the top, intercepted. Jason Gray. And Gray fumbled on the back end of it. Hold on a minute. Auburn still thinks it's Tigers. Yeah, it is the Tigers football. Ooh, that got scary for a moment for the Auburn faithful. Danny Werfel has thrown just his fourth interception of the season. That's number four, in fact, on the year for Jason Bray. It's not very often that Danny Werfel doesn't have control of the ball. This is exactly the case here. The ball got high on him. He just overthrew it. Jason Bray, number four, happened to be in the right spot. Makes an opportune interception. 
So Auburn has the football. Auburn at the Florida 45, and we'll be right back. Every team teaches their players, whether they're on offense or defense, to strip the ball. To Quez Green right here, strips the ball out from Jason Bray after the interception. Florida almost got that ball back. Nolan recovered. Auburn at the 45, and Rusty Williams off right tackle. Another good sprint down to the 33 and a first down. 12-yard run. Auburn came into the game today thinking that they would throw in order to run. Thus far, the running game has been good to Auburn. They've been able to find some creases in that Florida defense. Red Beasley in the backfield. He's been a starter at tailback for five games this year. Fell out of favor for a while, but getting action on this drive. Greg, great time. Up top, in zone, and incomplete. No flag. Robert Baker, the receiver, who was raised right here in Gainesville. Got an injured player uh, down there, and uh, what's that all about, Michelle? Well, I talked to the Florida training staff. They told me that Cameron Davis has sprained his left ankle. They've taped it up, and he is questionable for the remainder of the game. So we'll check back in with you when we know more. They're short a couple of defensive ends. Willie Cohen's out with a knee injury, and Willie Rogers can't play the first half because he was ejected last week. They can ill afford injuries in that defensive line. Second and ten. Ball bouncing through the fingers of Bailey. Boy, if you, if you ever wondered about Damian Craig's arm strength, that answered all questions right there. That thing was a rope. He put tremendous heat on that ball. I'm not sure if he had hit a receiver with it, they could have caught it. Tony George and Demetri Jackson into the Gator secondary. And this is the area of the field where Auburn's last possession broke down. Auburn's been a great third down conversion team this, this year. Going back right side to Cooper. Cooper gets away from the defender. Inside the 20 and the Lizard down to the 10. Oh, does he have some speed? And Tim Bochamp was over there one-on-one -on -one and just didn't have a chance. 22 yards. Terry Bowden, like all of the Bowdens, likes to do the unexpected. This is a sprint to the left side of the field. The defense pursues the quarterback. Damian Craig, all of a sudden, he stops and throws back all the way across the field to number 17, Mark, Mark Keith Cooper, and watch him run right here. Picks up the first down. A great counterplay to the Auburn offense. Inside they go, inside of the 10 with Kevin McLeod. You know, that last play, Jim, you love to counter yourself when you're on offense, to take away the flow of the defense. When you're playing a defense that's as fast as Florida, you want to find counter plays to slow that defense down. That last throwback was exactly what you need to do against that style of defensive play that Florida's employing. It makes everybody play a little more at home. Second and seven. Shotgun time with four receivers. Auburn trying to tie this game here in the first quarter. Craig lofts it. Gaucher back there and good coverage by Tony George. It'll be third down and the Tigers can pick up a first down at around the one. George, just a sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio. Big plans for him. His next two years. Third down and seven. You can bet Florida's going to bring some heat. Cooper. Got room. Cuts back. Touchdown. Tigers. Broke away from James Bates. Keith Cooper has put some punch into the Auburn running game. Coming into this game, Auburn has not been an effective rushing team. But when you put this little guy into the offense, he can make things happen. 
Seven yard touchdown run. Lawrence Wright was waiting for him at the one. But Cooper made the little juke move and found the end zone and Auburn's tied this game in the first quarter, 7-7. Well, Auburn on third down, spread them out with the four receivers, shotgun formation, and Craig handed off the football to Markeith Cooper, and the freshman took it to the end zone. Big kick there by Holmes. Redell Anthony. Ooh, he is proffered at the 13 flags down. That Auburn touchdown set up by the interception, the pick by Jason Bray. Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator at Auburn, right there. He's the mastermind. He's faced Steve Spurrier many times in their, their past, both in the USFL, in college. He's put together a game plan that he thinks can slow Florida down. He told me last night, I don't think we can stop Florida. I don't think anybody can stop them. But I do believe we can get them slowed down a little bit. And sure enough, he said the turnovers would be the key. Can they get Florida to turn the ball over? Terry Jackson, the third different tailback in for Florida. The blocking penalty against the Gators. They start this possession at their own seven. Fake the end around. They go inside. Auburn wasn't fooled. This has been a little uh, chess match uh, we've seen before. Bill Oliver and Steve Spurrier. Well, no question that Steve Spurrier has great respect for Bill Oliver. In fact, I asked him yesterday about that, and he said, you know, Bill Oliver's defenses play well every year, not just once in a while, but every year, and he lasts longer than anybody that is a defensive coordinator in the Southeastern Conference. Most coordinators only last about three years. Bill Oliver's been along, around a long time. Bill well, Oliver's defensive unit calls a timeout. So they've each used one here in the first quarter. All F club members are encouraged to stop by the Will to Win Room each home game day. Located in the South End Zone, the Will to Win Room is a great place for former Got a double header coming your way next Saturday on CBS. And the Boston College Syracuse game will get things started. Dan Innings team with a win already today against Rutgers. And they'll face that Donovan McNabb-led Syracuse team that's rebounding after a sluggish 0-2 start, rebounding with three wins. And then Terry will be up in Knoxville. The Alabama Crimson Tide challenging Peyton Manning and the Tennessee Volunteers. Two teams ranked in the top ten. Alabama and Tennessee, game two of our doubleheader next Saturday. Starts at 12 o'clock right here on CBS. Danny Werfel, though, early with a lot of pressure on the quarterback, something he's unaccustomed to. He certainly has been unaccustomed to it this season. He had it in the Fiesta Bowl against Nebraska, but they were the last ones that have really been able to put pressure on him. Until today, in the first quarter, Auburn's gotten to him twice. Over to McGriff, and that's good enough for a first. Takeo spikes, and Jason Bray bumped him out. Gain of 12. Auburn is so young in the secondary. Jason Bray, number four there, was really soft in coverage. Remember, we said they have two freshmen and two sophomores in that secondary. So consequently, they're not going to get up there and press all day long. They're going to play a little bit softer. That's going to enable Werfel to find some of those open receivers. They run it this time, and that's Terry Jackson tripped right away by the ankles. Good tackle by Keo Spikes. making of a wild day in college football with Penn State already going down, Ohio State trailing early against Purdue, Northwestern with a little more magic. Got two great friends in that Ohio State-Purdue game, Jimmy Coletto and John Cooper, both with tremendous UCLA backgrounds. I was with both of them there. And, well, I know they're fighting it out. Second and 10. Werfel, long ball man open, Hilliard at the 40. Had he been able to get that ball to Hilliard in full stride, it would have gone for a touchdown. And 
Juan Nolan was on the coverage. It doesn't happen very often that Danny Werfel under throws the ball, but that's exactly what he did in this case. Ike Hilliard was wide open down the sideline. He's beaten the defender by at least four yards. Number 13, Antoine Nolan. 43 yards on that one. And there's Jackson. Wrestled down by Brumball. Brumball having quite a quarter. We have a 145 on the clock. 7-7. Seven, seven. You get the feeling that both of these offensive teams are just going to let it rip for 60 minutes. They're going to play three wide outs, four wide outs. If you like wide open offensive philosophy, this is the game to be at because these guys are going to let it go today. Second and seven. Over to McGriff. And that's only good for about three. Crowd didn't like the double whammy over there. They thought it might have been a late hit. Jason Bray, who's been picked on a couple times over there, really came up and broke well on that ball and making the tackle on Travis McGriff. He broke extremely well. Third down for the Gators, third and three. Auburn ha has five defensive backs in the game. Oh, that's, uh, that will give Florida a free down and a first down. And Anthony actually backtracked, uh, which took away a first, but the penalty is going against Auburn, which will give Florida the first down at the 25. Mark Smith got a little antsy. <laughs> Remember, Florida scored its touchdown on a third down pass play. So Auburn's defense has had a couple of chances to shut them down at this end of the field, and uh, they allow Florida to keep going. Well, Florida has been able to constantly come up with the big play. That's the trademark of Danny Werfel and these Gators. They always seem to get off the hook with something big. From the 25, first down, Werfel, seven-step drop, looking left side, and he got the foot down. Jacquez Green at the one. Dan Evans on the coverage, and again, Werfel put it right in the hands of his receiver. Steve Spurrier said he wanted to get Jacquez Green more active in today's game plan. He simply runs down the field, fakes to the post, and runs to the corner. Danny Werfel puts the ball perfectly outside just for Jacquez Green. Trying to sneak for the touchdown. They don't give it to him. When those Florida receivers have you one-on-one -on -one with that much room, they're very difficult. Anthony, Hilliard, they're hard to cover along with Green. We'll have to change ends of the field. The first quarter has come to a close, tied at seven. And we'll return to Florida Field after this message and a word from your local station. Jim Nance with Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoya from Florida Field. The Gators and Auburn starting the second quarter with Florida looking to go in. Second and goal from the one. Another sneak. This time it works. Following the block of Ray and Ryan Kavich, Danny Werfel was four for four on that drive. Picking up 82 yards on the air in the air. This is vintage Steve Spur. He spreads the defense out on the goal line, gets it thinned out, then either lets his quarterback or tailback run behind that big physical offensive line. Edmiston. Oh, has hit the upright and went through. He has made 113 in a row. He came close to <laughs> not making that one. You know, Danny Werfel in the first quarter, he threw for 143 yards, got sacked twice, had an interception. But the thing that Werfel's able to do is to generate points. They make it look so easy. He gets those receivers isolated, is able to get the ball to them. He's, he's as good as I've ever seen in college football. 
93 yard drive for a touchdown. Hey, let's check in uh, down on the sideline with uh, Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? Well, Jim, you know, on a hot, sunny day like this, you always see players drinking Gatorade during the game. But what most people don't know is that that beverage was invented right here at the University of Florida by a doctor named Dr. Robert Cade, who's still a professor here, by the way. He originally named it after himself. It was Cade Aid. But when Stokely Van Camps bought it in 1967, they named it for the Gators. And, you know, they no longer own it. But what started as an elixir to keep essential minerals in the body is now a household name, thanks to Dr. Robert Cade here at the U of Florida. Guys? Well, they talk about Steve Spurrier's uh, contract, how much money he's making. I'll bet that man makes a little bit more <laughs> than the football coach. Big kick. And down in the end zone. Teague not allowing him to run it back. There he is. I can remember when I was a head coach at UCLA, and they brought Gatorade to our campus for the first time and wanted our players and staff to try it. And really, I didn't I didn't want to. You know, you resist the change sometimes. And I said, well, what is this stuff? And they, they guaranteed that it'd make the players feel better, they'd respond better, and it's a great drink. And all over the country, all over the world, people use Gatorade. Cameron Davis has returned to the Florida defensive line. Steve Williams, the handoff for a quick two. Mike Peterson in on the tackle. Auburn been shifting around the tailbacks this year. Beasley the starter for five games. Now Rusty Williams getting the call. We saw Cooper score the touchdown, but what are they looking for? They need more punch in their running game. That's why they've gone to Rusty Williams and Cooper. They're quicker, they're faster than Beasley. They're able to slice through those holes. Second and eight. Reverting to the shotgun. Craig. And that ball intended for Goodson. Shea Showers on the coverage. Auburn has not been able to run the ball well, so they've, they've gone, come into this game saying, let's throw the ball, therefore make Florida play looser, and it'll help our running game, and that's happened thus far today. They've played with a loose style, and they've run the ball better today than in previous starts. Craig only two of eight passing, and he's facing third and eight. Over the middle, the route wasn't run deep enough. Going to be shy of a first by a yard. Catch made by Karsten Bailey. You've got to be able to get first down yardage when you're a wide receiver in third down. You've got to know where the chains are. Karsten Bailey, number five, leaves it about a foot short right here. A mental mistake right there by Bailey. From one number five to a return man wearing the same number for Florida. And is he dangerous? Wes Green waiting for the boot from Holmes. Big kick. Drive Jacquez back to the 15. He scoops it up off a of one hop. And then only back to the 20. Tyrese Williams with the hit after a 56-yard punt. Florida leads 14-7. And we'll return to Florida Field after this word from your local station. Full house as always at Florida. Leading 14-7, Danny Werfel ready to operate this next series starting at his own 20. Great protection. Now unleashing the pass. Hilliard out to the 50-yard line. Spotted at the 49 of the Gators. 29 yards. Danny Werfel made that play go. He got away from the pressure of the Auburn defense. Ike Hilliard ran a crossing route across the field, and he's able athletically to stop and to turn back and catch the ball and reverse his field. That's where the athleticism of a guy like Hilliard or Redale Anthony, that's where Florida can kill you. Elijah Williams wide open. Another first down at the Auburn 40. Rushing for 11 yards. 
Hilliard, by the way, with three catches for 100 yards. Auburn in the SEC Western Division cannot afford another conference loss, hoping to go into that uh, Alabama showdown with a chance to win the West. Elijah Williams out, Terry Jackson in. Werfel steps forward. Anthony. Florida's making it look easy again. Out of bounds at the 16. 24-yard pass play. And I believe that puts Werfel over 200 yards passing. And we're two and a half minutes into the second quarter. They do make it look easy. Auburn that time got up in the bump man-to-man -man coverage with those young defensive backs and the Florida receivers crossed and as a result lost those defensive backs so Redell Anthony was wide open. Werfel actually 9 of 11 for 196. Has a chance to supplant Shane Matthews today as the all-time pass yardage leader in Florida school history. Jackson for about one yard. Well, we saw Auburn's side of the SEC standings. In the Eastern Division, there are the Gators, 4-0, with that 35-29 win over Tennessee. Georgia, the next opponent for the Gators, and up on November the 2nd in Jacksonville. Second down to nine. Warfel, in zone, Anthony. Almost a beautiful catch. Laid his body out for it. It was a phenomenal throw by Danny Werfel. I think Anthony right, could have made that catch. Right Terry. there, you would expect Redale Anthony, number 15, to come up with this ball. Werfel is a deadly accurate passer, the best passer in college football history. The pass maybe was an inch long. But you expect him to make that catch. Facing third and nine. Spurrier and Florida called timeout. 11.43 to go. First half, 14-7 Gators. Students, for the Gators November 2nd. I'm Pat O'Brien. Coming up at halftime, a wild day in college football, including Northwestern's come-from-behind win over Wisconsin. At Wisconsin, Wisconsin fumbles the ball with less than a minute to go. Northwestern goes on to win it. Bad day for the Badgers. See you at halftime. Barry Alvarez in Wisconsin chagrined after that loss. They won't get over that one for a while. That'll, that'll hurt for quite some time. Third down and nine. Auburn hoping to make it a wild day here in Gainesville. They need to come up with the play here. Play whistled down. I don't think they beat the play clock. Danny Werfel was trying to change the, the play with an audible. He saw something he wanted. He couldn't quite get it done. Five yards, still third down. So a procedure penalty. Florida gets called for a lot of penalties. This is their fifth of the game. The left tackle moved. The big left tackle right there. He just rocked out of there just a little bit early. Scott Piller. Third and 14. Werfel, great protection. And there's a flag. Dan Evans will be called for interference. Again, the Gators come up with the play on third down in Auburn territory. When you're a young player in the secondary like Dan Evans, just a sophomore, and you're trying to cover a guy like Ike Hilliard, sometimes you have to grab him. Right there, he grabbed him in a little bit early to keep that from being a touchdown throw, and he got caught. I'm not sure Hilliard would have caught up with that anyway, but it'll be enough for a first, or automatic first, at the five. Every time Florida needs the big play on third down in Auburn territory, they've come up with it. First and goal. 
Barry Jackson for three. Weaving for about three, maybe four. Ricky Neal holding on. Terry Jackson is the tailback that Steve Spurrier really likes down here in the goal line. Terry Jackson is really a roughneck. He can play fullback. He's played defense. He plays on the special teams. And he can run over a linebacker who's left unblocked. That's why Steve Spurrier likes him down here, because of his physicalness. Second and goal. There he is. Touchdown, Terry Jackson. He didn't have to run over anyone that time. There was a gaping hole in the Auburn front. Terry Jackson has really become a force down inside the 20-yard line for Florida. That particular time, the Auburn deep, uh, defense was blown off the ball by the center for Florida, number 71, Jeff Mitchell. He led the charge. Twenty-one seven. You called Terry Jackson a roughneck. He is on the football field, but last summer he taught gymnastics and tumbling for a summer job. We'll be right back. I wonder what the Auburn kids are thinking right now. Two consecutive long drives for touchdowns by Florida. You know, Auburn can't lose its confidence. They came in here knowing they have a young team. Their offense has been able to move the ball against Florida's defense. That's number one. They'll come right back with their same offensive style. Four wideouts, three wideouts, a go-for-broke type attitude. They're going to do that offensively. What they need to do defensively, that young secondary is really mismatched with those outstanding Florida receivers. They're going to have to get them stopped somehow. Teague angles this kick. Baker, far sideline out of bounds, 24-yard line. The Damian Craig, he needs to get on track here. He looked good on that one drive, rushing a couple of times for touchdowns to keep it going, move the chains, but only three of nine so far. Meanwhile, Werfel has directed the Gators to three scoring drives, three lengthy ones, including a 92-yarder, and their average touchdown drive only two, out, two minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> Doesn't take him long to get to that end zone. Never seen anything like it. Rolling out. Craig has an open man. Goodson. Out to the 45. That's a gain of about 20. Tyrone Goodson coming off a week of 10 catches for 145 yards, two touchdowns against Mississippi State. Damian Craig takes a real shot here from James Bates, number 44, the middle linebacker, but he put the ball on the money where he needed to right here for the big first down. Damian Craig will grow up as the game goes along. He's a young player. He's very talented. He's just not experienced. He will grow by playing against this Florida defense. Mike Peterson comes in to get the quarterback for a second time. He is in for Javon Kurz, who we understand broke his left hand earlier in this quarter and will not return today. This was a broken play by Auburn. The quarterback or one of the running backs right here, the quarterback went the wrong way. Damian Craig, he's the one that went the wrong way, tried to recover Peterson on the sack. the four receiver formation second and 13 Craig looking for Gaucher and well guarded over there by Tony George he's made a couple of nice plays today Tony George was on tight man-to-man -to -man co coverage Willie Gaucher number two really went and played defense there. That ball was about to be picked off, and Willie Gaucher leaped up and knocked it away from Tony George. Sometimes an offensive receiver has to become a defensive back at times. Yeah, that was the case. Gaucher out, third and 13. Bailey, he was open. Auburn will be forced to punt. 
Block was the defender, and uh, Bailey appeared to have him by a couple of steps here, Terry. Carson Bailey was able to get off the coverage by Anthon Lott. The ball was just overthrown. Right now, Damian Craig has not been accurate with his passes. You have to wonder about the size of this game in his mind. This means it's a big game against Florida and the reputation of the Florida defense for sacking the quarterback. Holmes didn't catch that one. But got a uh, fortuitous bounce that goes out of bounds at the 14-yard line. 44-yard boot that uh, certainly didn't look like one. And again, Danny Werfel will direct his Gators from uh, deep in his own territory. Doesn't seem to bother him too much. They took their first possession of the game, drove for a touchdown. In fact, a touchdown on a third down play. Then Auburn came back after an interception. Markeith Cooper scoring from seven yards out. Werfel directing one, 92 yards for a touchdown. Kept it on a sneak. Then Terry Jackson, after an 80-yard drive, got the final yard and the end zone. Red Taylor. Into the secondary before Martavius Houston brought him down. 12 yards for Taylor. Taylor led this Florida team in rushing as a freshman, now in his junior season. You love running backs who have vision. They run to a spot that they see in the defense open up. That's exactly what Fred Taylor did right there. He saw the opening, the pursuit by the Auburn defense, and cut it back. First down, Taylor gets the call again. 28, Houston with another tackle. Taylor on the carry, not by Houston. A lot of times you think about Steve Spurrier just being a passing coach, but he runs the ball 48% of the time. And the other thing is, last week, they rushed for over 300 yards against LSU, a good LSU defense. Second and eight. Rolling out of the Werfel. Has to unload it, and he gets hammered after the release by Brumbaugh. Danny Werfel has said on many occasions he doesn't mind getting sacked or hit as long as he can complete a pass. So he's going to get roughed up by those defensive linemen as an example right there. Griff in as an extra receiver. Third down, third and eight. the blitz. Florida picks it up. Werfel directing traffic and incomplete. Gray on the coverage. Green the receiver. Auburn fans quite pleased because they've shut down the Florida attack and we'll see Robbie Stevenson for the first time. It was an outstanding series by the Auburn defense. It was critical that they go in there get that offense for the Gators shut down. They were able to do that. That time, Jason Bray, number four, who had been beaten several times, came up with a good coverage play right there, enabling Werfel to have to throw the ball incomplete. Stevenson and a half shanks that one, but staying in bounds down the sideline and out of bounds at the 21. Tuesday in primetime, CBS Sports presents the Northwestern Mutual Life World Team Championship, a four-team skate-off featuring many of your favorite superstars on ice, including Katya Kordieva in her first competition. Also competing, Scott Hamilton, Christy Yamaguchi, Terry's favorite, Katarina Vitt, Torval and Dean, Kurt Browning, and more. That's Tuesday night right here on CBS. Auburn's design offensively has been excellent. They've spread the field, but Damian Craig is the key to the offensive success. He's got to start hitting some passes. Marquis Cooper shakes a tackle in the backfield. Flag down. And a gain of about two. Cooper on the carry. Stop by Bates. Staley over 100 yards again. He's been over 100. Lined up in the neutral zone, five yards penalty, repeat first down. 
Deuce Staley of South Carolina, one of the leading rushers in the country. He's been over 100 in every game this year except uh, the Auburn game. And that one he had 99 yards. They were 99 tough yards. He, he's an excellent running back. I really enjoyed watching him play a couple weeks ago. Gamecocks uh, lift their record to four and three under coach Brad Scott. Doing a good job there. First and five. Cooper. Nowhere to go. Dean Bates <laughs> clogging the middle. You know, going into this uh, game, Florida had outscored the opponent 83 to 7 or 90 to 7 in the first. A lot of the games have been over in the first quarter of this season for Florida. And one of the, and in the second quarter, Florida has exploded as well. The first half, it's been over. Auburn's strategy today was to try and keep it close at least for the first half of this game so they could have a chance to win it in the second half. Second and four, Craig. Tough catch. Baker makes it, though. Hauls it in. He gets out to the 43. Another one of those passes that was really humming when it came into the hands of Baker. <laughs> da Damian Craig has a strong arm, and he certainly demonstrated it to number 21, Robert Baker. Baker is right here from Gainesville. He was recruited by Florida to play defense, but he wanted to go to Auburn. He was a high school tailback, wanted to play offense, so he went to Auburn instead of attending the University of Florida. Gain of 17, first down for Auburn. At its own 43. Craig, man open. And Craig finds Willie Gaucher for a gain of about nine. As, as Damian Craig goes, the Auburn offense goes. Strategically, Auburn is doing an outstanding job of thinning out that Florida defense. When, and, and what that means is that there are throwing lanes created. All he has to do is continue to hit some of these passes. They're going to be able to move the ball against this Florida defense. Second and a short two, Cooper. And this little guy can keep the running game going. Well, he's going to move the chains with a first down at the 37. Got yeah. away from Johnny Rutledge and picked up 12. Markeith Cooper, number 17, is the hot player in the Auburn running game right now. His quick style, his slashing style, is effective against this Florida defense. He can run the ball against Florida today. Auburn will continue to give it to him. Four carries, 26 yards. Cooper will sit out this play as Rusty Williams replaces him. Five and a half to go in the second quarter. Florida leading 21 to 7. Williams. Sports through for a gain of about six. He's had a couple of nice rushes today. He's a freshman. Yes, he has, and he made he made two or three Florida players miss there. He broke a couple tackles, fell forward for a positive game. Former South Carolina High School Player of the Year from Monk's Corner, South Carolina. These two backs, Rusty Williams and Cooper, have added some zip into that Auburn running game. We'll call it second and five. Craig. Going for Baker. Not a well-thrown ball, but Fred Weary was with the receiver. Florida was up in their normal press defense. There's not much room for error when you get into that defense. You've got to get a good release. That time, Robert Baker couldn't get off the line of scrimmage clean. As a result, Damian Craig had nowhere really to throw the ball. Third down and five. And a timeout call. Auburn. Leaving Auburn with one in the first half. Big third down play when we return. Auburn and Florida have met every year since 1945. Terry Bowden with a big call here on third. Third and five from the Florida 32. Rusty Williams fighting for it, but coming up a yard shy. Shea Showers held on to him, fourth and one. What do you do here, Terry? Auburn is going to go for this 
I, I, I don't think they have any choice. They need to go ahead and keep this drive alive. Florida is just too explosive on offense. This is the time you've got to get your players to make that first down. Well, the spotters call it fourth and a short two. The formation, everything in tight. Three tight ends, including T.J. Dunnigan on the right wing. Williams, not going to get there. There is a flag, however. And Auburn's uh, signaling they're going to get a first. Five yard incidental face mask wow. against the defense makes a first down. Face mask call will give Auburn the football back just when they thought they had been stopped on downs. You just never know about these runs. Here it is right there. You see a hand. Shea Showers, number two, got his hand in that face mask right there. Like Keith Kelsey also. The ball moved to the 24. 345 to go in the second quarter. Fred rolling out, flipping in. Now they say incomplete, incomplete. Tyrone Goodson had it bounce off his hands. He was jolted by Mike Harris. And Locke thought he had made the pick. Damian Craig can hurt you with his legs. He comes out on a naked bootleg right here. He's got wide receiver wide open he throws the ball behind it the ball knocked out by Mike Harris looked to me like Anthony Lott made the interception second and ten Craig working the sidelines for Bailey incomplete and after that last play Terry Powell <laughs> The agony no. of coaching. The agony of coaching. He knew that he had a wide receiver wide open right there. Third down and ten. Drag zips it. Intended for Bailey. Pressure from Tim Bochamp. There was double coverage on Karsten Bailey, number five, right here. Damian Craig throws the ball. It's excellent coverage right there. Little bumping going on, but no call, and they're going to kick it this time. Sage Jowers made up for that penalty call. He just had a few moments ago with... Excellent coverage. Holmes has missed five in a row. This from 41 yards. And his streak is over. He drills it from 41. Jarrett Holmes. He had not only missed five in a row, but seven of his last eight. And Auburn puts three on the board. Florida 21, Auburn 10, second quarter. Jarrett Holmes drilling the kick from 41 yards, a junior college transfer from Clinton, Mississippi. And you talk about a confidence booster. He had started the year five for five, including a 50-yarder, but uh, then everything went south. He'd missed seven out of eight, five in a row, and he comes in here to Florida Field and uh, looked pretty easy from 41 on that one. I think it was fourth and 10. I, I believe Terry Bowden thought about going for it because he had their confidence shaken in their kicking game, but that was a huge kick for that young man. Coming up at halftime, we'll send it back to New York. Pat O'Brien and Craig James with the scores and highlights, and as Pat uh, alluded to it earlier, it's a wild day in college football, plus a little inside information from Danny Sheridan. That last drive by the Auburn offense Damian Craig was two of six 
He missed his last four passes, but the good news is they were still able to get three points out of that drive. When he eats up, when he starts putting the ball where he needs to and has in the past, the Auburn offense is going to be successful against that Florida defense. They run the football in the round with Ike Hilliard for about four. Yeah, they've got to be saying over there on the Auburn sideline, if we can get um, Craig a little more confidence, and he starts getting accurate with the football, got a chance. There's no way that the Auburn offensive players and coaches don't feel like they can move the ball today. They have had success. They've had players open. When they get the ball back, Damian Craig, he has to heat it up. Second and six. And Warpole wide open. Green at the 40. And buried at the 47. Dio Spikes brought him down, gain of 23. How did they get that open? Jaquez Green is a dangerous receiver. He loves to run inside tight routes. It all starts with protection. If you have time as a quarterback to run deep inside routes, you can be successful. That's exactly what happened there with Jaquez Green, number five, and Danny Wolf. There's Elijah Williams zigzagging into Auburn territory. Rush of seven before Brad Ware brought him down. Well, Danny Werfel distributing the football to his wide receivers, four of them, and he's over 200, 219 yards. Second and three, and short of a first. You Elijah almost, Williams. You almost get the feeling when you're trying to defense Florida, it just comes at you from all directions. If it's if it's not Redale Anthony, it's Ike Hilliard. Uh, they've got so many weapons with Elijah Williams, it just keeps coming at you. That's what's difficult. Ricky Neal was shaken up. He was involved in that uh, mass of bodies that clogged up the middle for Elijah Williams. Ricky Neal, a good one. Junior linebacker. Leading tackler on Auburn's defensive team. Very underrated player. Doesn't get as much publicity as the Keo Spikes, mm -hmm. but is very Attention effective in the middle of that Auburn defense. Kind of got flipped in the middle of that play, and Terry Bowden has said he's the unknown, unsung star of our defense. Right. There he is giving up his body for that Auburn defense goes over the top and comes down look like on his shoulder or back of his back of his shoulder or possibly his head but he bounces up and uh, he'll be coming back they'll want to get him back in the game as soon as he's ready he's a factor meanwhile it's another third down situation in Auburn territory Third down and two. Staying on the ground, fumble the football, picked up by Auburn. That's Marcus Camp with the recovery, and Auburn has the football at the Gator 37. Keo Spikes made the hit, and Marcus Camp made the recovery. Turnovers are what has cost Florida the game. The last two games out of three against Auburn, the Keo Spikes put his hat right on the ball, right there. Marcus Camp, what a dream, right, right there, getting that ball. Greg. Look at this scrambling effort. And finally brought down at the 41. Anthony Mitchell with the tackle. This was third and two. Takeo Spikes can be as good as he wants to be at linebacker. They think he can be one of the great linebackers in Auburn history. Turnovers are the key to this game for Auburn. They have to survive with those turnovers. They've gotten two in the first half. Second and 13. Greg is buried by Tony George on the safe 
Steve Blitz. Timeout called by the Tigers. Timeout, Auburn. They're out of timeouts. Tony George comes from the left side of the screen. Damian Craig never sees it. That's the responsibility of Damian Craig. He's got to be able to read that blitz. So it'll be third and long when we come back. Timeout, Auburn. Third and 24, Craig going long to the end zone and intercepted. Demetric Jackson. It was a jump ball with Tyrone Goodson. And with 22 seconds remaining in the half, Florida will take over at its own 20. Damian Craig threw the ball into double coverage right here. Tyro Goodson, number 83, made a tremendous effort for the ball. But Demetri Jackson goes up and leaps up 27, takes it away. What a play. Florida running the football. Elijah Williams tripped for a three-yard loss. Florida will probably be satisfied to just go to the locker room with an 11-point lead. Demetri Jackson on that last play. He's the nickelback for Florida. They have a tremendous amount of confidence in him. He justified it right there. He's a young man who graduated last December in three and a half years. He's now in graduate school at Gainesville. And that's the end of the first half with the score. Florida 21 and Auburn 10. And let's uh, go back down sideline to Michelle. All right, with Coach Steve Spurrier, I mean, you scored again on the opening drive, but Auburn has forced some turnovers. Where do the adjustments come? Well, we got to run the ball a little bit better, hopefully. Uh, but, uh, again, maybe we ought to try throwing every down. I don't know. Danny's been sensational, but hopefully we can run a little bit better this half. But defense playing well for us. Thank you, Coach. All right. Jim? All right, Michelle. So at halftime, Florida 21, the Auburn Tigers 10, Pat O'Brien, Craig James, Danny Sheridan. Be along with college football today after this word from your local station. Well, Florida will have the football first in the second half, leading the country in scoring 52 points a game. The Gators leading here 21-10 as we get the third quarter started. Jarrett Holmes to kick away for Auburn. Bill Anthony over the shoulder will down it. Bring it out to the 20. Michelle Tafoya had a chance to visit with Terry Bowden coming out of the locker room for the second half. In 1993, Coach, you guys were down by 13. You're down just 11. What would you tell your team in the locker room? Just make a few plays and have fun. You know, we're watching if anything can happen offense. And if we could make some plays on offense, we're getting some guys open. But they're very, very good. How happy are you with the defense so far? Really, we have some young guys out there that are lost half the time. But they're making great plays the other half until we're only down by 11. So hopefully we'll make less mistakes this time, and our offense will make a few plays. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, Michelle, so looking for fewer mistakes on defense out of Auburn, and there's a play. Jason Bray bagging it away. Incomplete. And uh, Terry Donahue, your thoughts about uh, Auburn here in the second half to have a chance against the number one team? Well, the one thing Auburn has done, as we said at the start of the telecast, is create turnovers. They've gotten two turnovers in the first half. If they can get a couple more in this half, that'll keep them in the game. And Damian Craig, he's the key. He has got to hit some passes. If he does, they're going to be tough in the second half. Second down and 10 for the Gators from the 20. Play action, Werfel fires at Hilliard. First down at the 35. 14-yards to Hilliard, who was over 100 yards receiving in the first quarter alone. Rushing yards, Auburn outrushed Florida in the first half. But the passing totals hugely uh, in favor there of Florida. I think the quarterback comparison is where the real difference is. When you look at Damian Craig, 6 of 19, that's the key. He has got to heat it up here. This time. Elijah Williams breaks through the line and dashes to the 45 for a first down. Antoine Mullen made the stop in the secondary. 
Florida offensive line has been reworked, but they are physical up front. They can run the ball and protect the quarterback. Elijah Williams rips through a gaping hole on that particular play. Keeping Craig loosening up, hoping to get on that field in a hurry. But Florida also in a hurry. Ball deflected. Like Mostella might have got a hand on it. Or Charles Dorsey. That offensive line for Florida. Mo Collins, the big left tackle, is out with the suspension. Zach Pillar, the right tackle, moved over to the left side. Donnie Young, the right guard, moved out to the right tackle position. The Florida coaches feel like Donnie Young, number 75, they think he's playing at an All-American pace right now and playing better at tackle than he did guard. Second and 10, is it in the round? In the round? Yes, Redell Anthony. The Tiger 40 and bouncing around to the 34. 21 yards. It's hard to keep a handle around Steve Spurrier's offense. Redale Anthony can attack you from anywhere on the field. He takes the pitch on the reverse. The thing about Spurrier is he keeps it so loose that your defensive football team eventually just starts to break and come apart at the seams. But again, it's Hilliard. Breaking tackles and spinning free. And finally, Nolan rides him down at the 11. Broke away from Houston. Florida comes at you with Redale Anthony on the reverse. Then they come at you with Ike Hilliard on, a, on an in route. The ball is placed perfectly by Werfel. And Ike Hilliard is able to run with the football after the catch. That's the thing that makes Florida so explosive. These guys make 21-yard uh, pickups look as uh, routine as most uh, teams picking up three or four yards. Pick up the middle, Elijah Williams. There's a three-yard run inside of the 10. Ricky Neal is back in, and he made the hit. Neal shaking up in the first half. You know, when you watch Florida play, like you say, they make it look so easy. They just move the ball with such skill, and 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 it's a pass here, a pass there, a reverse, a tailback up the middle. It just always keeps coming at you. It just never stops. The pressure wears you down mentally as well as physically if you're trying to play defense. Two tight ends in on this formation, second and seven. Harris Ross, the second tight end. Werfel uh, batted away. Keo Spikes was trying to cut back to that uh, tip football. Dorsey uh, got a hand on it, the second one of this series. He had a sack early in this game. Charles Dorsey gets a little spin move right in the middle of the screen. He's able to get a hand up and get the ball tipped. Not bad agility for a big old 275 pounder. Florida has really been tough on third down in Auburn territory. Now it's third and seven. Werfel, look at this protection. Back to the end zone, though, incomplete. Yeah, Houston. Martavius Houston almost tipped that football back into the into the field of play. What an interception. So that'll bring out Bart Edmiston for the field goal try. with the explanation to Coach Spurrier. 25-yard try for the man who's made five out of nine on the season. Teague on the hole. Edmiston makes it. Give him three on the first possession of the second half. Florida 24, Auburn 10. Market, the place that made hot hand carved Boston Carver sandwiches famous, proudly announces the new $4 chicken carver combo. <clears throat> A chicken.
chicken carver, side, and regular soft drink for four dollars. Hurry in for a chicken carver piled high with real cheese on a bakery roll, plus a freshly prepared individual side and a regular soft drink for just four bucks. The four dollar chicken carver combo only at Boston Market. Hurry in now. Offer ends October 20th. Isn't it funny how something can appear completely different just by seeing it in another way? Is it big or small? And sometimes, if you look at a thing just right, you might see it in a way no one ever has. The world is full of surprises, and you just have to know where to look. The Chrysler Town & Country LXI. Luxury from an entirely new perspective. MFS invented the Mutual Fund in 1924. By the time Satchmo first played the Cotton Club, we'd been noteworthy for 15 years. No wonder millions of investors applaud our performance record. For more information, ask your financial advisor or call us. MFS. We invented the Mutual Fund. The legendary Chalice of Malta has never come cheap. In 1238, it was captured by 10,000 Celts. In 1512, it took an entire armada. And in 1703, it took an arranged marriage to the daughter of Charles V, the older one. But luckily, if you want the golden chalice of Malta, all you need is the golden card of Visa, with extraordinary purchase power for extraordinary things. Oh. It's even mightier than the sword. Visa Gold fits everywhere you want to be. Mentally, that field goal yielded by the Auburn defense. How about it? Well, it was huge. If Auburn had given up a touchdown right there, the defensive football team quite possibly could have broken. But just giving up three points, they're still in, in range of this ball game. And if Damian Craig can come out, start here in the second half with a good drive, heat it up, find himself as a quarterback like he did last week against Mississippi State, where he threw for almost 400 yards, Auburn can get right back into this game. Starts the series from the 20. 85,697, the second largest home crowd ever for the Gators. As I watch Damian Craig play, I know what Terry Bowden's thinking. This kid has potential. He's got tremendous legs. He can escape the rush. He's a streak thrower. At times he gets hot. At other times he cools down. But against South Carolina a few weeks ago, he found a way to win the game. Last week is when he really kind of emerged as a quarterback, made his presence felt. He's against a better defense today, but he just has to do it against this good Florida defense. Just on his last five throws in the first half. Oh, he threw a good ball that time to Goodson. But Shea Showers reached in. Tyrone Goodson is one of the more explosive receivers on the Auburn squad. It's a good throw by Damian Craig. Shea Showers just got a hand in there at the last second to tip that ball away. You've got to give the defense credit there. Outstanding secondary play. Goodson was the uh, favorite target last week of Craig in that Auburn record-setting performance by the quarterback. Second and ten. And a delay a game penalty against the Tigers. Backup quarterback John Cooley sending in the plays, signaling. Tommy Bowden, the offensive coordinator at Auburn, told me yesterday that he wants to keep the ball outside a lot against this Florida defense. It's dangerous to throw over the middle. It's safer if you go deep or throw to the outside. Second and 15, and his hands open over there. Diving attempt. By Baker, and they give him the catch at the 23. No, they actually rule it incomplete. Incomplete. This is exactly what Tommy Bowden was talking about. Keep the ball away from the middle of that Florida defense. Keep it on the perimeters or go deep with it, particularly when you're backed up into your own territory. Don't mess around with that ball. 
third and 15, and Craig has now missed on his last seven throws. Goes to his second target. Goodson was open, but a sterling defensive play there by Anthony Mitchell. Stepping in and knocking it down. Tyrone Goodson was wide open. Anthony Mitchell saved the day by getting that big hand of his up, knocking that ball loose. Damian Craig was about to get his first completion of the second half right there. Holmes to punt for the fourth time. 47-yard average today. Green from the 42. Look out. There is a flag down. Got it back to the 50. That'll back up the Gators most likely. Larry Melton makes a lot of plays on special teams with the hit to the 44-yard punt. Every time Jaquez Green, number five, touches the ball, you kind of hold your breath. You're not quite sure what he's going to do with it. It's only because... Uh, Lock in the back on the receiving team. It's 10 yards from the end of the run. Timeout. Now Green ran two punts back against Kentucky in a three-minute span. Florida with the football back and a two-touchdown lead. Gators have the lead 24-10, but at halftime in the Auburn locker room, defensive coordinator Bill Oliver told his defense, hey, some of you didn't believe what it would be like out there. Now you've had a 30 minutes to come up with a pretty good scouting report. I know you're young, but use the next 30 minutes to grow up. Guys? Well, let's see how much they mature here. Werfel. Open man again, caught, and then run out to the 48. That's Dwayne Mobley, senior fullback. Larry Melton on the coverage. When you play fullback at Florida, you block most of the time. Every once in a while, you get to catch a pass, and very seldom do you run the ball unless you're Terry Jackson playing that fullback position. Dwayne Mobley that time slipped out of the backfield, made a nice reception. Seems like the Gators are wide open almost every time. And there's Taylor advancing the football to the Auburn side. Florida just stretches your defense to the breaking point. They put too many pressures on you with, with the ability of Danny Werfel and his, his ability to throw the ball down the field with the speed of the wideouts and then the power of the offensive line with their running backs. They don't have any weaknesses on offense. Second down and seven. Looking, looking, now throwing and incomplete. Good defensive play there. So talking about growing up, Dan Evans, a freshman, true freshman. Actually, he's a true sophomore. They have seven true freshmen out of their top 22 defenders. Anthony Riddell in the slot. Loves to run corner routes. He acts like he's going deep, then breaks it off to the outside. Dan Evans comes over, makes a good play on the ball. The ball really was off target. Dan Evans, who lost a sister to cancer back in August. During camp. He was on the scout team up to about three weeks ago. And then Drew is starting assignment. He's been really coming on in recent weeks. Like that left side moved a little early. Cooper Carlisle, left tackle for the Gators. For the ball snap, movement by the offensive line. Five yards, still third down. One of the things you have to keep in mind is that the Auburn secondary, we mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, two freshmen, two sophomores, they're playing against the most efficient passer in NCAA history in Danny Werfel. And you, when you take Ike Hilliard and Redale Anthony and add those to the mix, they have their work cut out for them. See what they do on third and 12 with defenders. Werfel straight drop back. Green reaches up high for the first down catch. Wes Green, 18 yards and move the chains. Steve Spurrier wanted to make sure that Jack Wes Green was worked into the offense more. He ran an inside route. Jason Bray, number four, just can't quite cover him right now. He just isn't mature enough, hasn't seen enough of those routes in his career to handle number five, Jack Wes Green. Tell by that replay just how hard it is to keep up with that Gator speed. 
First down. That guy's fast. He hits. Warfel over the top of Anthony. Danny Warfel, the 1995 Davy O'Brien Award winner for the top quarterback in college football. A lot of people are starting to talk about Danny Werfel as a pro prospect for the first time. His arm has been questioned in terms of his arm strength, but his accuracy is so incredible that the pro scouts are starting to get real interested in Danny Werfel now. 7 and 10, take it to the line. Going long, Quez Green. What a defensive play there by the back judge. <laughs> Pass interference in anybody's mind. And they're going to let him know about it here. The only man who could have stopped Jacquez Green. Jacquez Green in the slot. He's got the speed to get down the middle of the field. He's up on top. He runs that post route right there, the back judge. What a play by the back judge. <laughs> Would you have called that interference? <laughs> Clearly interference. <laughs> Look at him, he's laughing. Yeah. He, you gotta have a hey. sense of humor. He tried to make a good play, he just got in the way. Yep. Third and ten. And they cross him up with a run on third and ten, and they get the first. Taylor inside of the ten and down at the eight. Where was the back judge when you needed him? Sometimes running plays work because you have great backs, and sometimes they work because you have great blocking. Ike Hilliard, number 19, will make the crucial block at the bottom of the screen that enables this run to rip off the huge yardage. Watch Ike Hilliard lock in to the Auburn secondary man, number four, Jason Bray. What a block. The guy can catch, he can block. And Auburn calls a timeout. 9.25 to go, third quarter. Florida looking to go in again. We'll be right back. The Heisman Watch, sponsored by Charles Schwab, investing the way it should be. Welcome back to our New York studios. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with Craig James. This is the Heisman Watch. And who would have thought we'd go to the ACC to pick somebody today? Well, at least we'd go to the ACC and talk about Warwick Dunn at Florida State. But no, let's talk about Tiki Barber, who had an outstanding game. Again, this guy is an unbelievable player, running, receiving, punt returns today. Rushes for his sixth straight 100-yard rushing game to start the season for Virginia. That's never happened before. All-around great player. That's why he leads the ACC in all for the yardage. If it were for Danny Werfel, he would be our Heisman candidate for today. Tiki Barber, back to the game. I didn't mention Nordano Pace. <laughs> <laughs> Tiki Barber, the well, Orlando Pace in Ohio State, after being down 14, have come back to move ahead of Purdue. A couple of touchdowns. And their Heisman candidate they mentioned, Danny Werfel at the eight, first and goal. Werfel zips it back to the end zone. Anthony touchdown. <laughs> Second of the day for Redell Anthony. in the slot is going to run inside, fake to the post, and then just go to the corner. Number four, Jason Bray, bit, and look at the precision of the throw and the catch by Anthony. You got to marvel at Danny Werfel's ability to throw the ball deep on target. And you got to marvel at this man. Steve Spurrier and what he has done at Florida and the way he's doing it. High tech Florida football. Oh, that streak is over for Edmiston. He had made 114 in a row. And that penalty had backed him up to the 20, well, 25 yard attempt. Nonetheless, it's 30 to 10 Gators. Warfel has thrown for two touchdowns, run for another, 294 yards passing. He needs.
needs another 80 yards to move past Shane Matthews as the all-time quarterback passing yardage at Florida. Baker to return the kick. Just has an unusual sense, Danny Werfel does, of when and where to throw the ball. Baker will hole up the middle. And he's out to the 36. Yeah, we heard about Tiki Barber today and some of the other candidates for the Heisman. Oh, this is uh, coming into the day first. Hans Bart at uh, Texas Tech over 1,300 yards. It'll be interesting to see his numbers against Nebraska. Orlando Pace, Ohio State, Troy Davis. Jake Plummer in you know, Arizona State. Warwick Gunn showed us a lot last week. A no win over Miami. He dominated the game against Miami. Cooper outside. And out to the 46 of Florida. Jim Rowe handling the right side with a good block. 18 yards for Cooper. I really like Marquise Cooper, number 17. He can get the ball down the field in a hurry. He's a young player, just a true freshman, but he is explosive and adds an element to Auburn's running game that they have not had in past weeks. Eric Hines, Tucker, a tailback, but they're going to throw here. And Craig gets a chance. And he actually picks up about a yard. Well, a new defender in there for the Gators in the second half, talking about number 54, Willie Rogers who was uh, not allowed to play the first half today. He was ejected from the ball game against LSU in the second half last week and had to serve that penalty for the first half today. NCAA rule went into effect a few years ago about fighting, totally cleaned up fighting on the collegiate scene. It was a great move by the rules committee. It really helped college football. You hate to see a guy like Willie Rogers have a suspension, but it affects everyone when you punish somebody like that. Second and nine, and a fine play there by Fred Weary. Robert Baker was the target. How about Air Force and Notre Dame? What a fight that's been today. Let's find out the outcome. Back to New York and Pat O'Brien. All right, Jim, what a fight indeed in overtime, 17-17. Notre Dame with this chance. Ron Paulus fumbles the ball. And then Dallas Thompson for Air Force kicks a 27-yard field goal. Air Force wins 20-17. Party in Colorado Springs. Back to Jim. Is that going to be some party? What a win for Fisher to bear. Notre Dame's second loss of the season. Third and nine, and Williams makes the catch and only gains two. Harry Bowden likely to go for it now. Fourth, fourth and about seven. There were those who thought Notre Dame would climb back into the national championship picture. Go 10 and 1. But that uh, ended any hopes for the Irish today. That huge win by Air Force. Well, you think of all three of the service academies Army, Navy, and Air Force, they're all having exceptional years this particular football season. Fourth and seven. Pressure. Craig written down by Willie Rogers, who just came into the game here in the second half. The fifth sack of the day by Florida. Willie Rogers was missed in the first half by this Florida defense. Watch him at the bottom of the screen. He's the one that beats the left tackle, gets around, sacks Damian Craig. Joe Jim Rowe, number 73 for Auburn, was the one that was beaten. Where Terry Bowden right now is so frustrated. He knows that the potential's in that offense. He just can't quite squeeze it out of it right today. Andy Werfel going He's with the long in. ball. And back to Anthony for another over-the-shoulder catch for 36 yards. <laughs> Werfel over 300 now. Riddell Anthony gets in between the corner, number four, 
are Jason Bray and the safety 27, Brad Ware. And the ball is in a space there that you love as a coach. Right in between those two defenders. And the nice thing is Redell Anthony left plenty of room so that Werfel could complete the ball inbounds. A great route by the receiver. He left room to work on the sideline. Inside give, Elijah Williams, forget about it. Untucked, touchdown. is one of those backs that has the gift of vision. He's able to cut back away from where the defense pursues. He does exactly that. The right tackle, Donnie Young, number 75, made the key block on the back side of that play, which allowed the defense to be unsound. Well, Edmiston starts a new streak. That drive took 15 seconds. Florida, 37 to 10. Jim Nance with Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoya. Florida has broken this game wide open midway through the third quarter. And Auburn can't run it out. I'll tell you what Steve Spurrier has done. He makes the game fun. He keeps you guessing and all kinds of imagination with his offense. Donnie Young has been playing tackle all day long, and Zach Piller, number 69, has been playing the left side. They switch now to guard and tackle, respectively. They're the two players right there that created the cutback lane for Elijah Williams. The offensive line, they can play more than one position. They're physical. They can do it all. Personal foul penalty against Florida will bring the football out to the 35. Blitz or Blitz Creek in this quarter. Peters with 16 points in the third. To go up by 27. I see Williams running for three. People wonder why Damian Craig's having such a hard day today. It's because those wide receivers are pressed up there with those defensive backs. They've been unable to get off that press coverage by Florida. That's one of the reasons why Damian Craig has struggled this afternoon. Williams with a big gap. And a first down out to the 48. Ten yard run. Gators in quest of the 18th straight win in the SEC, dating back to the uh, loss to Auburn here two years ago. Back in the 90s at the Swamp during the Spurrier era, Florida is 22-1 and one in conference play at home. James Bates looking across the line to Craig, the quarterback. He fakes, now rolls out, throws it on the run to Baker. He had him open. Auburn is going to come out of this football game saying two things. We ran the ball better than we thought we could, but we were unable to hit the passes when they were open. Right there, Robert Baker is wide open. Damian Craig just can't quite get him the ball. Second and ten. Craig has missed 10 of his la uh, last 11 attempts. Three receivers in the game, including Eric Lowe and Willie Gaucher. Picks four. Cooper. Near 
first probably a yard shy. He can uh, he can hit the hole in a hurry. Fred Beasley with a lead block. Well, and Auburn came in today thinking that they were going to have to throw the ball effectively in order to loosen up the running game. But in reality, the running game is working because of the speed and quickness of Marquise Cooper and also the blocking of the offensive line. Auburn is going to look back on this game and say if we could just have hit some of those open receivers. Damian Craig, though, is going to develop as a quarterback. Before long, he will be a tremendous asset for this Auburn offense. Third and one, and first down picked up on the quarterback sneak. You know, Buddy Martin, the chronicler of Florida football, Good friend of Steve Spurrier has his book out, Reign of the Swamp Fox. He was telling us about two years ago when Terry Bowden called his father from the locker room at halftime with a cell phone, and uh, his dad suggested you run that reverse. They did in the second half, and it led to a Frank Sanders touchdown. How's that? That's nice to be able to call your dad up for a little help. That's great. Greg, back to the line, maybe. You know, Terry Bowden's not shy about... His, his, the help that he receives from his father, he, he speaks very openly about it. He says, I let my dad kind of put in an offense, work all the kinks out of it, and then I put it in the next year after, after he's experimented with it. So it, it's, a, it's a family affair. And Tommy Bowden, the offensive coordinator, he coordinates the offense so that the players and coaches can run the plays that Terry calls. Second and 10, Auburn trying to get on the board in the second half. Rogers giving chase, and Williams can't hold on to it. They had Mike Peterson right there, ready to make a quick hit as he made the catch. Let's make the move up the coast, up to the northeast, and Pat O'Brien with another update. All right, Jim, Oklahoma State improves to 4-0 at home with a win over Iowa State, 28-27. The story, though, Troy Davis had 50 of his 238 yards rushing on the day. And speaking of performances, Louisiana Tech quarterback Jason Martin, how about this, Jim and Terry, 28-36, 542 yards, eight touchdown passes. Back to you. That's not bad, having eight touchdowns in one game. Some don't have that in the whole season. Some don't have it in the career. Third and 10. Greg dancing around, desperate now. No one open, they sack him again. Tim Bochamp. You said it, gator bait. They looked at Damian Craig as nothing more than gator bait before this game, and that's the sixth sack today. This is a coverage sack. Damian Craig just could not find anyone to throw the ball to. Florida was in a soft, too deep coverage. They have two defensive backs deep, so they can't get beat. They just didn't have anybody open, and Tim Bochamp came in for the big sack number 93. Drives from inside of the 10. Green fair catch at the 9. We've got a big figure skating show coming your way Tuesday night in prime time here on CBS. The Northwestern Mutual Life World Team Championship. And Katya Gordieva will be competing along with Scotty Hamilton and Christy Yamaguchi. Katarina Vitt. It's Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, right here on CBS. The Florida Gators charter member of the Southeastern Conference. In 56 years before Spurrier got here, they had never won the conference title. Now he's led them to four SEC titles in the 90s. And Fred Taylor wrestled down after a one-yard run. Beat FSU. They're already looking ahead to that game that you have to think will set up a Sugar Bowl berth and a national championship appearance for the winner. I think both teams are, are looking to that game. Florida State has a tougher schedule the rest of the way. Florida has a, has a relatively easy schedule up until the Florida State game. And how often that game will decide number one, either the Miami, Florida, or Florida State games, has such an impact on the national rankings. Taylor. A little unbalanced at first, but then able to get his footing. Jerome Evans with a good block. That's a 
First down for Florida. They had 36 first downs last week against LSU, which was a Florida school record in one game, 36 firsts. Along with over 300 yards rushing. Steve Spurrier said at half he wanted to run the ball better this half than he had in the, in the uh, first half. He's got 23 first downs today. And they are running the ball considerably better mm -hmm. this half. Taylor, look at him find a hole. Out to the 26. Fred Taylor went over 100 yards against LSU, as did Elijah Williams. Who else uh, do you think is playing ball at the level of Florida and Florida State as you look across the country? Well, you took Florida State. I was going to say Florida State is capable because of that great defense. Ohio State may have the best balance other than Florida of anybody in the country. They have a tremendous offensive explosion power along with a good defense. Fumble, fumble. Auburn says, we got it. That was Elijah Williams on the carry. Still no sign. Auburn football. Another turnover. Third one today. kinds of uh, fakes in the round etc and it looked like it was maybe even a clean handoff now, Steve Spurrier in Florida has have run the reverse today already that was a fake reverse to Ike Hilliard and the handoff just wasn't clean it just didn't ever get exchanged the way they normally had practiced that Tiger from the 32 and Williams to the 30. Auburn turned it over once in the first half. That was the interception in the end zone by Demetric Jackson. Florida has turned it over three times today, but still leading by 27. It just shows how good Florida is when you turn the ball over three times to one for your opposition and you still can dominate the game 37 to 10. Williams spinning away from two defenders. There's a beautiful piece of running, and I think he has the first down. You know, if you're Terry Bowden, you've got a minute remaining here in the third quarter, and you're down considerably 17 points in, in the game, but the, the, the real 27 points in the game, but the real key right now is he's building for all the future games as well as this game, and one thing that he's found today is some running backs. Rusty Williams, Marquise Cooper have given him some running game which is going to serve him well the remainder of the season. That's important. And Damian Craig, he's just got to get him to develop and come along. Young quarterbacks take time. Inside of a minute to go, third quarter. First down, Tigers. Craig. Boy, yeah, good time. Time to get the feet planted. And he overthrew Robert Baker. Fred Weary on the coverage. Well, Florida has an outstanding secondary. Fred Weary, number 24, is as good a cover man as anybody has in the SEC conference. He's on tight coverage right there on Robert Baker. Craig's numbers uh, throwing today continue to deteriorate. Seven out of 27. Just a little better than 25 percent. Williams, never a chance. Met right at the line. Mike Peterson and Ed Chester. They made a change this year at Florida. Defensive coordinator, after last year's defensive coordinator, went up to Marshall, took the head coaching job. And Bob Stoops, has he improved the Florida defense? Well, particularly in making them more aggressive. Touchdown scored. Florida's defense has become aggressive and therefore put the ball in the end zone, created big plays. I think that the tackles for losses, the pressure that Florida has this year, and by the end of the season, will be even greater than what it was last year. Fourth defensive coordinator under Spurrier. Third down and 11. And Craig picked off. Picked off by Anthone Lott. 
And that was the last play of the third quarter. Snuffing out another Auburn attempt in Florida territory. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Florida 37, Auburn 10. We'll return to Florida Field after this message and a word from your local station. We are entering the fourth quarter with number one ranked Florida and its machine in full swing here. Andy Warfel and the Gators take over after an end zone lot interception. From the 10, first down. Taylor out to the 18. Jim Nance to Terry Donahue. Michelle to Foya. Florida Field enjoying its second largest crowd ever today. The 20 largest attendance figures in the state history, any sport, have been football games here at Florida Field during the 90s, during the time that Spurrier took this program to a whole new level. Second and three. Werfel's next pass attempt will be number 1,000 on his career. Taylor upended near the first down. Started on the opening drive today. Florida marching 80 yards. Anthony scoring on a third down pass play. Back came Auburn after a pick. Cooper from seven yards. Then the Gators, Werfel on a sneak. That was a 92-yard drive. Jackson from a yard out. 21-10 at halftime after a field goal. 41 yards by Jarrett Holmes. But in the third quarter, Edmiston, 25-yard kick to put him up 14. Anthony's second touchdown catch of the day, 30-10. Missed extra point. And then Elijah Williams going in untouched to make it 37-10. That's how it stands right now. First down. Look at Taylor sidestep the defender. He is really getting in a groove now. Ricky Neal had him for a moment. He broke away. Florida is dominant team. Auburn has eight guys up on the line of scrimmage to try and take away the running game, and yet Florida is still able to crease the defense for a big run by Fred Taylor, number 21. Eight guys committed to the running game. Taylor with 86 yards on 11 carries. And he's going to get 100 here shortly. Florida's ability to run the ball this year is greater than it was last year when we had a chance to see them. They are much more powerful, not only in the running game, they're a better defensive football team than they were a year ago. There's no question in my mind, this is a better Florida team than last season. One of the reasons is that the depth the tailback with Williams and Terry Jackson, Fred Taylor, Steve Spurrier says that's the one position we have great depth, our best depth at tailback. Second and two. comes 100 all the way down to the Auburn 45 Taylor now with 13 rushes 103 yards back-to-back 100 -back yard efforts the Auburn defense is extremely young and right now they're just overmatched against a great offensive line some powerful running backs and a quarterback that has electrified this crowd today and almost every single week that he plays the most accurate passer in college football history Danny Werfel those are tough combinations to try and slow down Taylor just getting a workout now and breaking tackles on every carry bumped out at the 38 seven more as a coach you really don't know what to do right now Bill Oliver the defensive coordinator who's as keen and sharp as anybody that's ever coached the game. He's got eight Auburn Tigers up there wrapped around the line of scrimmage, but the power of the Florida backs and the power of the offensive line is just too much. Taylor will take a breather. And they shuttle in Elijah Williams, the starter. You get the feeling that Danny Werfel is 
run it so many times now if he wanted he could probably beat Auburn with a long ball. Second and three Elijah Williams. Slices back in late flag. Eli Williams on the carry flag. Elijah Williams, the leading rusher for Florida. Holding against the Gators. Elijah Williams, uh, stepbrother, Greg Allen, the all-time leading rusher at Florida State. Warwick Dunn is moving on in on his all-time rushing totals for the Seminoles. Got to be impressed with Elijah Williams. Averages 6.3 yards in his career every single time he carries the ball. Holding call backs up the Gators to the 47, leading 37 to 10. Second and 12. Here's Williams. He has the first down. Most of the way to the 30. One minute, one minute, it's Fred Taylor hitting you. The next, it's Elijah Williams. Terry Jackson just waiting on the sideline to get in. He can't wait for his chance. The depth of Florida's tailback position that we talked about earlier is no question about it. It's the strongest position on the team. They've got a guy, number 32, Eugene McCaslin. He's as talented as any of these guys. He just can't get on the field yet. Down to the 27 with Williams. He's a junior. Elijah from Milton, Florida. This drive started deep in Florida territory. They've not thrown a pass 10 straight runs. They've been able just to grind the ball out against an eight-man front. The young Auburn defense is on its heels right now. And it's a drive that started at the 10-yard line. Second down and seven. Williams, look at him decide to cut back to the right. Gets away from Nolan. Nolan actually helped ride him down with Evans at the 20. That's a design counterplay by Florida. They fake a sweep to the left, get the defense to take a step or two in that direction, and then let a great back who's got speed and the ability to make people miss. He starts back the other way on his own and goes ahead and just runs to daylight and uses his athleticism against the defensive players. Watch him there as he attacks the defense. He punishes those defenders. 552 yards total offense. And we've got nine minutes and 42 seconds left in the ball game. First down. Here's his thousandth attempt. Werfel. McGriff had it for a moment. Would have been fitting to have uh, the milestone pass attempt go for a score. So in a thousand passes of his career, 94 of them have gone for touchdowns. Travis McGriff is not a player you hear a whole lot about in the Florida offense. He's kind of their fourth wide receiver leaping up there. He has the ball temporarily, just can't hang on to it. Rodney Creighton, number 10, pretty good coverage on the play. Second down and 10. And Elijah Williams, about three. Last week, the Gators put two backs over 100, Williams and Taylor. Taylor's already accomplished that today, and Williams is moving in on that uh, daily double himself. 15 carries, 92 yards. I would be surprised if Elijah Williams doesn't get to play until he gets that 100 yards. One of the things you like as a coach is to create competition between great backs. They go in the film room, and one guy gets 100, the other guy gets 100. Those offensive linemen feed off that. They love it. Third and eight, Werfel airbound. End zone bound, and it's a touchdown! Touchdown, Ike Hilliard! All day long, Florida has thrown the ball outside on post-corner routes. This particular time, Danny Werfel hits Ike 
Mike Hilliard inside on a post route. The ball is perfectly delivered. He's a phenomenal thrower. And Edmiston's kick good. Three touchdown passes today. 346 yards. College football is sponsored by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. Prime Star, Mini Disc Satellite Television, and by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Mike Hilliard catching another touchdown, his eighth of the year. He made a second in the nation. Touchdown catches. Only Harris of Wyoming with more than Redell Anthony. Baker. 24. Flag is down. 8.32 remaining here in Gainesville. Auburn stayed with Florida for... Blocking the back on the return to 10 yards and then the run first down. Well, for the first quarter anyway, it was 21 to 10 Gators at halftime. Ohio State was down early 14 to nothing, but uh, the Buckeyes uh, up now by 21 at Purdue. Arizona State is losing to Southern Cal, 21 to 14. I talked to John Robinson this week prior to the game, talked to him a little bit, and he felt like if they went in and played as well as they could possibly play, he has a young team, they had a chance to upset Arizona State down in Tempe. Blocking call on the kick against Auburn, sets them back to the 14. And that run out to the 16. Tennessee and Alabama would benefit by a loss to Arizona State. They would move up in the rankings. This is going to be a great matchup for us next week, Tennessee and Alabama. And Penn State losing today, as well as Notre Dame. So two top ten teams have lost. And a third one, Arizona State, in trouble, as is Damian Craig, Tim Beauchamp. Sack number seven by the Gators. We mentioned Gator bait during the, the telecast that the, the Florida defense thought that they could sack Damian Craig today, and sure enough, they have. Tim Bochamp, 93. It's a naked bootleg. Damian Craig came out there without a blocker. Oftentimes, it's a great play, but Tim Bochamp played it perfectly. Back seven times today. He's been intercepted twice. He's completed seven of 28. Third down. They almost got Rusty Williams back at the goal line. Willie Rogers only able to play a half of football today, but he's made it count. Willie Rogers has come off the bench to ignite the Florida defense. He just dominates. Number 78, Geno James of Auburn, just missing the safety. Geno James, Auburn feels, is going to be the best offensive lineman in their program in years. Look out, Holmes almost had it blocked. Fair catch called by Green at the 38. They average 52 points a game, the Gators, and they're poised to go in for yet another touchdown on this possession. Well, the Gators have made a change at quarterback. Danny Werfel closing out his day with a touchdown toss. And Brian Schottenheimer, senior from Overland Park, Kansas, will get some snaps from the Auburn 39. Elijah Williams has his 100 and more down to the 15.
it's just impossible for the Auburn defense right now to slow down this Florida attack. Florida is running the ball at will against their eight-man front. In addition, anytime they want, they're going to be able to go and throw it. They just have too many weapons. Auburn has fought hard. They're extremely well coached. They're just too young on defense to hold up against this kind of style of offense. Terry Jackson, now the running back. Fake flea flicker, and he keeps it down to the nine. They still keep you guessing. Just a little counter play. Keeps, it, it's like a counter puncher in boxing. They go ahead and start to sweep one way, get the defense to flow, then come right back with that speed and athleticism and the tailback the other way. Nolan down for Auburn. Two backs over 100 for Florida, second straight week. Elijah Williams, 116 yards. Red Taylor, 110 yards. So you just saw Terry Bowden on the sideline there. Really have been impressed with the time that we've been able to spend with him prior to the South Carolina game and yesterday. He really, I think, has control of his program, where he wants to go, what he's done. He feels real secure about himself as a as a football coach, and this guy can attack you. I think strategically, they use the right approach in this game, despite the fact they've only been able to put up 10 points. They spread them out, did a good job. They just didn't have the kind of day out of the quarterback that they needed. Antoine Nolan on that last play. Watch him number 13. Just crushed by the wave. And as they continue to tend to him on the field, we'll tell you that Florida is over 600 yards total offense for the game, 602 yards. Crowd is chanting, Bobby's next. Bobby Bowden. They're alluding to. He's not next on the schedule, but he's the next Bowden they want to take on. Bobby Bowden will come in here with a much more talented and experienced defensive football team. When he comes in, when Bobby Bowden comes in, and not only that, they play at FSU. And that's going to be a huge advantage for Florida State. But th their defense is mature, and this young Auburn defense is so young and thin. Well, you look at the most wins since 1990. Florida State won the championship in 93, but let's not forget Nebraska's won two national championships in the 90s. Florida still looking for its first national championship. And you know, the thing that all those teams have in common, they changed their recruiting philosophies. They went to speed. They took high school defensive backs, made them linebackers, took high school linebackers, made them defensive linemen. They put speed on the field that they didn't have in years past, and consequently, they just have played terrific defense. Could these two have Heisman Trophy bookends 30 years apart? Spurrier won his back in 66. And Werfel appears to be well on his way. And he comes up today just um, 28 yards shy of becoming the all-time passer in terms of yardage here at Florida. Well, there's some great Heisman candidates this year, but somebody's going to have to go a long way before they beat Danny Werfel. See Spurrier with 36 career touchdown passes. Obviously, you can't compare systems, but Danny Werfel today threw career touchdown passes 93, 94, and 95. <laughs> the game's changed. It really has changed since Steve played, and now when Danny's playing, a different, different game. In the middle, they go, and that's a touchdown. A touchdown, Terry Jackson. Can't weigh what
what this fake reverse has, what kind of an effect that has on the defense, but it clearly does. It allows Terry Jackson clean sailing right up the middle of that Auburn defense. The defense gets frozen by that reverse fake, and Jackson's able to slice right through the hole. From 10 yards out, his second touchdown of the day in Edmiston with the extra point. Almost on average, Florida 51, Auburn 10.